It was sin number three, sin number three. Lack of predictable profits. Lack of predictable profits. In December 2010, I was in University of Denver speaking to about 250 entrepreneurs as well as angel investors out there. I asked this question to the audience to see if there's any CPA firm or accounting firm in the audience, and there were obviously few. And so I asked a question to a CPA. I asked her if she knows whether or not small business actually make profit. Anybody wants to guess? Does small does most of the small business make profit? No. Okay, yeah, so no. Well, nobody raised their hand. Can someone just... No. <laughs> yes. well, I have to give it to someone new. So, um, Melody, in the back of your cards, just write down CDs. Um, the answer was no. So I asked the CPA, I said, tell us why most of the small business do not make profit. And this is what she said, and I quote, because no one shows small business owners what to do to make profit, okay? And unfortunately, that's the case, but, so when I put here, no lack of predictable profits, not only I want you to make profit, I want you also have predictable profits, so how do you go about doing that? There are two things on your chart. One is called critical success factors. Critical success factors. The other one is called key performance indicators key performance indicators. Critical success factors and key performance indicators. These are the two sets of numbers. I know for most of us sitting here, when we talk about numbers, we're like, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. Numbers are very confusing, but those two key sets of numbers are numbers that has meaning to you as well as your team. Now, Dan was in construction business about 10 years or so. Yes, okay, sorry. I will hurry up, Lori. <laughs> Dan was in construction business about 10 years or so. Now, in 2008, when the financial crisis first hit, what do you think happened for construction industry? It was really, really bad. As a matter of fact, his company went down from a $6 million company down to a less than a million dollars. It was terribly wrong. But the good news is that she, he, his business is still standing today, so that's the good news. One of the things that I was able to help him identify that after you know, years of being in business, he never thought about that was a good number to use. And I told Dan, I said, Dan, what you want to do is to only reach 80 home sites a month. And he looked at me and said, oh, of course we can do that. That's easy, 80 home sites. And he said, how'd you get that number? I said, it's easy. I just took your financial statement, da, 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 da. that's 80. And, and he said, so how do I do that with my team? I asked him, how many superintendents do you have in your company? He said, two. So I said to him, so how many sites per superintendent do you think that he can look after? How many? 40, right. So, is that you? Well, okay, I'm not, I'm going to skip the gift. Okay. Uh, all right, so how many weeks do we have in a month? Four. Once in a while, five. Once in a while. Who say four? Okay, right, in the back of your car, right now, big book. All right, so each superintendent is going to take care of 40 home sites a month. So how many that superintendent needs to take care of in a week? Ten. Who say ten? Ten, okay, in the back of your car, like big book. So that's it. That's very easy. Do you think 10 is achievable number a week? That's all. So in 2010, just by monitoring those numbers, his revenue, now 2010, all the competitors die. He was probably one of the few companies still open. In 2010, their revenue was $2.2 million. Break your number down to something small. Today, they can predict their profits and still prospering. 